Good morning to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ, and uh, uh, we will soon have a new sibling in Christ here in, in a few moments. Who has the clicker? You have the clicker. I'm going to need your help this morning. I'm going to say, like, next slide and occasionally, and no, not yet. <laughs> I, I, I said it, and, uh, and the magic worked. <laughs> all right. Okay, now next slide. I was just messing with you. <laughs> All right, this morning we heard from James, and he said this following, and, and I'll be honest, this is, this is uh, uh, maybe my own translation of some of what he said. And he said, did you know that a giant forest can become a blazing inferno by just a small, uh, just a small fire? And did you know that the tongue is that kind of fire, a whole world of bad? The tongue is placed among our body parts, staining the whole body, setting on fire all the processes of creation, and the tongue itself is set on fire by hell. But did you know that with this tongue we bless God, and even continue creating a naming like God created and named in the beginning? And with this tongue we curse those who are made in the image of God? From the same mouth come blessings and curses. My brothers and sisters, this is just no good. So believe it or not, when I read this and I was thinking about that passage this, uh, this week as I prepared this message for us. This reminded me of YouTube. If you can click on the next slide for me. Yes, YouTube, that YouTube, the YouTube that we, that we, uh, that we broadcast, our, we're broadcasting our worship right now. Uh, you know, that YouTube that says, that, that advertises where you can enjoy the videos and music that you love, or upload original content and share it with all your friends, family, and the whole world. Well, how so? Well, actually, before I explain how, it actually really reminds me of a special corner of YouTube called Beauty YouTube. Next slide. This, has anybody heard of Beauty YouTube? I know you have, because I've been talking about this all week. You've heard of Beauty YouTube? Okay, can you do me a favor and explain to all of us what is Beauty YouTube? <laughs> um, people blog or blog themselves putting on makeup. That's right. That's right. They people take videos, a lot of times in their bedrooms, and they're putting on makeup, different costuming, sometimes, you know, for formal occasions, giving tutorials. This has been going on for over a decade, so. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have 10-year-olds who are better at putting on makeup than, than 30 and 40-year-olds these days. They also give product uh, endorsements and reviews. Uh, and these folks, these kids, a lot of them are pretty young, have translated these into businesses. So they have their own makeup lines and uh, their own branding, branding deals. So how does this have to do with what James talked about? Well, just like any online platform, there is actually a lot of drama related to this. Uh, you don't need to actually know anything about YouTube or Beauty YouTube to really understand this kind of drama. But I'll, I want to share a little story. A few weeks ago, one Beauty YouTuber, uh, he got a little documentary made about himself. So he got a little bit famous. And the other Beauty YouTubers were like, how come this guy is getting famous? Because they had some problems with him. He was a little bit mean. He, he takes videos of himself being mean to people. He's been known to actually to say some pretty hurtful and even sometimes racist things. He does this because he wants to be controversial. And he said, why, do we, why are we helping out this mean, this mean person? Right? They're using that tongue of fire to say, why? Well, this guy has what? millions of fans and his fans said all right well if you're so perfect they start digging up looking for things about these other YouTubes, YouTubers that are criticizing him and it turned out that this little cabal this about four or five of them that were really in the middle of this they also have seemed to said some terrible things some equally racist discriminatory things huh well, each of them in turn posts, because it's YouTube, you have to post stuff on video. And so they each put apologies. But this is like performance for a lot of these folks, and a lot of these apologies fell really flat. They called this thing Dramageddon. And what's the fallout of this Dramageddon? Well, 
honestly destroyed reputations, businesses, and livelihoods. There were people that had makeup lines that got canceled. There were people who have lost subscribers and thus advertisers. Livelihoods, some of these people are paying for college, they now don't have their, their tuition being paid for. It just really destroyed a lot of lives. Not only destroyed the reputation of the person they accused, but they also in turn got their reputations destroyed because obviously, as James pointed out, you have to be perfect. None of us are perfect, in fact. I mean, what did James say? He said, and with this tongue, we curse those who are made in the image of God. My brothers and sisters, this is no good. They cursed each other, and it was no good. But James is warning, the warning that this scripture sort of put on my heart this week to share with all of you, and for me, is more than just to be careful of what you post on the internet, though, it's about that. It's also more than a warning about saying, or, or just racism, even, even though it certainly is about that, and certainly about the different ways that we curse the other children of God who may not look alike us. It's about speech and communication and the power of that. Speech, communication is so wonderfully powerful. So powerful, in fact, that the very first act described in the Bible is God speaking into existence the sky and the earth and the stars and the sun and all of creation and all the animals and in fact all of us. Then, maybe strangely, God turns around and then give, gave those same people that he spoke into creation the same power to name, describe, categorize, invent, or other words speak into existence and giving us direct participation in God's continuation of creation. And with that, what have we done with this, with this great gift? We've developed our sciences and our laws and our philosophies. We've developed great medicine. We've developed social structures and food productions and all these great things that preserve life. Again, we use this and we bless. But we've also, as we just heard from this YouTube story, we also abuse that power and we hurt each other. We spread sin and shame and we even degrade life. Just like James said, did you know that with this tongue we bless God and even continue creating and naming like God created and named in the beginning? And with this tongue we curse those who are made in the image of God. From the same mouth come blessings and curses. My brothers and sisters, this is no good. power to bless and curse, the power to preserve life, and the power to take it. It is really, this communication actually is more than just simply words or actions. It is the power to shape re reality. And it is awesome and it is terrible. So obviously, please take care with what you say. But next slide. That is really grim. And shame on me if I end our message today on that. Because when James used this language to write, did you know a giant forest can become a blazing inferno by a small fire? And did you know the tongue is that kind of fire? That the tongue itself is on fire? I was reminded of something else, the Pentecost. We've heard this story, and in fact, we're in the church season of Pentecost now, right? Where the dis disciples were all together and then these holy tongues of fire were above their heads and in some sense their tongues were transformed into fire because everyone was speaking their different languages but they could all understand each other and what were they speaking they were speaking the salvic the, the salvation promise of the gospel about Jesus describing allowing followers of Christ the disciples like those 11 and then more like you and me their tongues were replaced and made of holy fire with a new power. And this power to give the promise of forgiven sins, the power to bring people in close relationship to God once again, and to grant salvation from sin, all in the name of Christ. Well, certainly blesses and curses, but also this other more profound power of salvation. Wow. We should be really, really careful and really, really generous with this power, I think. Amen.